Hello, Alexandra. I am so glad you're here. I have a lot to talk about, and I prefer to have someone to listen to me. Otherwise, I might appear crazy talking to this um, mechanical eye that, that I turn on to myself. Uh, so there's a number of things to talk about. The first thing I think I need to talk about is the bot wars. The bot wars are starting. We have um, three people have expressed interest and they've been assigned characters. There's still no one to play Pegasus yet. So Alexandra, if you know anybody, send them to um, Battle Stations colon bot wars forum on boardgamegeek.com. Um, there's only like three forums, I think, there. You could probably find mine. Mine is the one that says Pablock and Ren, something else about it in there uh, to see if they want to take part. I, I'd be fine if no one did, though, too. I mean, we've got a good group here. So I've set it up, and we can just take a look now. Those of you who are participating, um, making choices for our people, kind of see who they are, um, see where everyone's at. These plastic figures are actually robots. I decided not to use the robot cutouts just because there are people who are going to be playing and they might want to be able to easily differentiate who is an ally and who is not. Not to spoil anything, but very soon these robots are going to go berserk and you are going to have um, some problems on your hands. Not that you're going to have to actually work do it, deal with it play by play, but I think there will be some broader decisions that I ask you to make once we get started. Um, before that though, there is going to be, and actually that's a mistake to have that there, this one should actually be there. You're going to have uh, an ensign join your group because you don't have a pilot uh, due to Cowboy's departure. Um, so we're, we're, let's, let's, let's pick someone to play that role. Um, we'll use this nice D6 here and we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six for our piles. I know it's unfair, Alexandra, because the people who are in the loser's bracket are in a larger pile. So if their pile gets chosen, they don't have as much chance. Same with the champions. They're in a larger pile than, say, the Roadrunner lefty pile or the Brezza Hubba pile. But that's just the way it is. Real people, multi-game solitaire, mega tournaments, not fair. And real people cards in this game, it's, I'm not going to be fair to them. I'm a cruel father. Three. What did, I forget how I numbered it. Um, I think it was one of these three, right? So I'll just roll off between those. Th uh, let me number it again. This time, pay attention. I got I got off on a tangent. One, two, three, four, five, six. I suppose I could stop it and then replay the footage, but that would be too fair. Here we go. One, two, three, four. I gotta remember five this time. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> That's kind of nice. All right, Cobweb. I'll let Cobweb stay in it. Cobweb was just in a game with me. Um, and that was a lot of fun to play with her. She got, she didn't do very well, but. All right. We're, we're shuffling it up, Alexandra, so we don't know which person we choose. We want it to be a surprise. This person is going to be an ensign. She, the, he or she may or may not continue with the group. Um, depending on what happens, they might leave for a time. They might to come back. They might. Um, they might die. Let's see. Oh, this is Snugbug. Snugbug, Casey Machine Operator. He'd like to be a rodeo bull rider. Decided to get married after first date. People who think they know it all. He'd like to meet Barry Goldwater. If it isn't my wife or my life, why worry? Being master of his lodge, he's proud of that. He's shy and dull, loyal, honest, dependable Snugbug. Interesting contrast with the other people. Um, Snugbug, he was in the human trill leg of the tournament. I can remember that because that was the most recent leg. Uh, he played Betrayal at the House on the Hill as well as Zanziar. Hmm. All right, right back over here. Alexander, this is the game I'm playing um, with your acquaintance Pablo. He's he's been a a real joy. Um, what he's doing for all of us players is incredibly kind, a very giving giving sort of thing to be doing. Um, he set up this thing. He asked people to play a game. He's not even playing. He's just running it, and he's really been doing nice graphics, nice stats, and. Um, it's really made it a fun experience, I think, for everyone involved. So, 
give him a high five for me if you see him in real life. Um, so here we, here we have all our players. Um, this is Wolf Corbett. Wolf Corbett, he made another, what did he do? He made another domestication attempt, I think, last time. And I'm, I want to say that didn't work, work out for him. But he did some excellent writing on the board. I should actually check. I'm going to check and I'll be right back. I want to make sure I get this right. That's right. I remember. I should adjust the light here. Um, he did succeed in his domestication attempt, but it was a, a low roll, which means he didn't get the footprint increase that he was probably after. That one didn't do any good. I'm right-handed, Alexander, so this is hard for me. I, let's see. I'm also trying to keep the camera steady. I'm trying to be sensitive to you, the viewer's needs. got this weird blind effect. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Well, it doesn't look good, but you can see it. Let's turn on the light switch. This is my light switch, Alexandra. There we go. Okay, that's a little better. Um, once upon a time, I would have cut for all that, but I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm just getting careless in my older age. Um, so Wolf Corbett, he got a, a Metropolis there. He didn't get the footprint increase that he wanted. That's a bummer. Uh, possessive man, Jonathan Bolton, he did a cool, interesting move. So there's a, there's a stuffy nose-faced entente here between these three. And so they all have their own areas. I'm not sure how much you've been following this game, Alexander, but that's what's going on. So the red, the white, and the green. Um, you can kind of see they're all in their areas. Uh, he wanted a card that was in, I think, USR Locals pile. And in order to get it, he sent a guy over and had the guy commit suicide so that he could make a Sabine raid, which is a thing that you can, you can do. You can take a card from someone's pile if you attack them. You don't have to be successful in the attack. So he was, he was able to kind of maintain the pact because he didn't actually hurt anybody um, of USR Locals. And then... Um, in the process get the card he wanted. So I think that was essentially what he did on his turn. USR Local, he um, he did something kind of sweet actually. He played a card or something. I don't, I don't know what he... Uh, maybe did a domestication attempt. I don't know what he did on his innovation side, which is sad, sad state of my memory because he just did it. Um, but on his, maybe because I'm thinking so much about his population side, he sent a guy up here and just to preserve his entente he starved him. You know, he didn't have to do that, but he had made this agreement to have the stuffy nose faces have their own area, but when the agreement was made, he had a guy down here already, and so he had the guy commit suicide rather than infringe upon that pact, which is particularly sad, I think, because I think the intent's going to be gone soon. I mean, it looks to me like the Hobbit Lord, Mimim over here, is going to go into chaos and get into Era 3, which is the time when their entente ends. So that's what's going on in global affairs. In terms of us, we've got Cowboy over here. We've got Flush over here. We would like to domesticate like Wolf. We want to get our footprint up. Um, I don't know how, how strong the will of the people is to do that, but the first thing they need to do to make that happen is they need to tell Little Red a story the story of our people. Which is a great opportunity for me to tell you, Alexander, the story of our people. As I remind Little Red of, of the, from whence he came, um, I can tell you a little bit about from whence we came. Um, so first there was Pegasus. Pegasus was a matronly old lady. And I'm going by the very abbreviated kind of who begat who version that I just kind of typed as I went along. Um, Pegasus, after there was Pegasus, she was the first of us, the first culture of us that was on the board. Um, Little Red became the priestess of the ritual. So he became kind of the first um, people who were above the other people or who had this, this role other than sort of a member of the group. Um, then Pegasus begat Ka as in Cat. Kaz and Cat is no longer on the board right now. Um, neither is Pegasus. Then we learned about the hafted thrusting spear. That was the first of the kind of militaryness um, that befell upon us. 
Then we learned of the raft. Then we used bark cloth beaters to learn about courtship. And then we got into courtship some more. Then we did something with clay and cane baskets. And that was just something we carried around. And then Cabby got giraffe. And giraffe had a vision because in the north part of Africa was a giraffe. And she wanted to tame that giraffe and ride the giraffe so that it would be a giraffe riding the giraffe. She called that her man of giraffe destiny. Um, then wolf's sheep disease descended from the north, kind of by the, the giraffe, uh, but further north. And then little Rhea dies because of the disease. And then Pegasus, then other people kind of went a little rabid and started throwing themselves and, uh, in these kind of kamikaze attacks. Pegasus died in conflict with Wolf's archaic Homo sapiens. Cad died in conflict with the archaic Homo sapiens. And then Runt came into to being, and she became the new priestess of the ritual. Um, and I, I kind of envision this history to be sort of like a portion of the Bible, where it's just you're just reading a list of things that happened. That are maybe not so interesting unless it's kind of your own story. Uh, but you have to listen to it anyway, or you don't. It's up to you. But if you want to know what happens next in the Bible, you have to listen to this part too. Because otherwise you can't say you read the whole Bible. Um, so... Giraffe begat Cowboy, who died right away. He, she begat him, and then he went and died uh, by the archaic Homo sapiens. Then we had some daubed granaries. I bet we did that for a double fecundity decrease, which uh, consisted of the Halith Thaloi, which is a beehive tomb, and female figures. So both of those things helped our, our fecundity get in control. And then Giraffe begat Flush. Whilst absent, oh yeah, gi giraffe was missing for a time, so her cultural um, influence was just kind of myth, and and so the people who were, who were kind of the people of giraffe, um, were sort of aimless, and in that that time they begat flush, which makes a sort of strange sense. Um, where are we at? Then, oh. Then there was the Halif Deloy again, and the female figures again, and then the smallpox came uh, from the possessive man Jonathan Bolton, and then Runt dissipated as a result of that. So here we are without a priestess again. And then Pegasus came back and falls in the struggle of red. So it was kind of a case, same thing like, um, like with cowboy when cowboy first appeared she appeared and then died um, for her people and then little red became the priestess of the ritual once more and he still is uh, then we got a rudder then we got a harem and then it was the maiden voyage of the Pobuklan wren and then chaos fell milky and I never wrote down when milky was begat or who begat milky hmm and then our town, which we're not allowed to name, but I'll name for you anyway, um, it Mound was founded. The Mana Draft Destiny was fulfilled. And that was a, that was a bigger case than this history. Um, that, there was a lot more emotion to that than this history expresses. Um, then the stuffy nose, face, and taunt. And then we got some shellfish middens. So that's kind of a brief history of our people. There are inaccuracies in that history, and there are omissions in that history. Now, Alexander, we have a problem. We have two plants, rice millet or maize beans. Hmm. Both of them are equally tempting to us to domesticate. Uh, do we want to domesticate? Yes, we kind of already decided that last turn that that's what we would be doing. But who's going to domesticate? Cowboy's been kind of unresponsive. It seems like he's a little dazed right now. Um, Flush would really like to domesticate. And I think he's probably going to get his way. Giraffe does not think that's... well. Giraffe, uh, she's not sure about that. Um, Little Red doesn't think it's a very good idea. 
he would like cowboy to domesticate. We're going to have to have a little talk. Although cowboy was not responsive, we tried for the millet and it didn't end up mattering because nothing happened. We, we ended up with a three, um, which is nuts. And we can't handle nuts. So that was kind of, not a lot happened there, Alexander, except that we told you a story and then um, it was forgotten, I guess. So now we have a population action to do. We're at one population. What should we do with that? You know, we giraffe doesn't want us to to risk our fecundity. Flush would like to do something with it, but um, cowboy is still unresponsive. I think it's going to come down to little red. I'm going to spend some time with him. And little red went with Flush's idea. So we're going to do something impressive unprecedented. I'm not going to draw from the pile. The reason being is there are people already playing as these fellows here and I don't want them to to miss out yet before they've even started. So we're taking Pegasus and she's going right here. Let's find us a horse. I'm really just showing the whole process today, Alexandra. I want you to appreciate that. There's a horse for Pegasus. That's probably not Pegasus' horse. I think I actually put him in this giraffe tray. Yeah, here's a smaller horse that's better. Right there. And that'll be our turn. So what that's going to mean, though, is that we have to draw another real person to make up for Pegasus' absence. We need to have a crew of five. So we have another ensign. I believe that's this pile here. Let's go ahead and do the draw. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, Alexander. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what um, your friend Pablo has facilitated for me and Parker.